All right, what's up, Melodic Triaders? I'm gonna try something new today. I'm gonna do this episode of Ask Jordan in video format and see how it works out. Today's question comes from Daniel. He has three questions. How do you use triad pairs? How do you apply triads over altered dominance? And how do you sound outside when playing with triads? All great questions, very related, also very different, so I'm gonna try and hit each one quickly. Triad pairs are fascinating to me. I love the idea of them, and they can sound very hip, but most people I hear using them have been using them the same way for decades. You play up one triad, you play down the next triad. Right, up, down. Or maybe up, up. It's the same idea of just constantly going back and forth like little mini arpeggios. And it, so it always kind of sounds the same. It has a very particular flavor to it that just feels very dated to me. I love the idea, I love the, the potential with them, but I try to find more outside the box ways of using them. And there's a lot of different ways that I've discovered to use them. I'm gonna talk about maybe just one or two. Uh, this month in our Melodic Triad study group, we're studying the major seven. The major seven triad pair that we're specifically looking at based on melodic triads, if we're in the key of E, is G sharp minor. That's what I would refer to as the melodic triad. It's the in triad, the triad that is stable, versus A major, which is our tension triad. Okay, so that's the first thing that's a little bit different with the way I think about triads versus the standard approach is that it's not two equal triads. One is always going to be stable and one is always going to be tense very similar to the Bayer Harris method of the six chord versus the diminished chord, except instead of four note chords, I'm dealing with triads. So there's an in triad and an out triad, G sharp minor, A major. So one thing I might do is maybe let's keep this top note, this D sharp note on the fourth fret, static. I'm not gonna move it. And I'm just gonna move the bottom two notes of each triad. G sharp and B, A and C sharp. And we can move through a handful of different inversions of these triads without letting go of this, this note. miniature dominant chord happening inside of the major seven chord. And it's going to want to resolve back to our melodic triad, G sharp minor. Okay, I just moved these little dyads down to the fourth and fifth string. one of the earlier sections in McCoy Tyner's piano solo on my favorite things because we just lost him the other day unfortunately and he does almost this exact idea this exact technique he's using these exact two triads it's not why we're using them we're using them because that's what the melodic triad approach gives us but he's using them also and instead of keeping this this D sharp note static he's putting a B note on top three notes of these two triads. with triad pairs, but we're not just arpeggiating them. So that's a very cool thing to do. There are other cool things outside the box ways of using triad pairs, but this is a good one to play with. Um, and especially in honor of McCoy, since we just lost him, 
I think I'm going to leave it at that and hit your other two questions. How do I apply triads to create an alter dominant sound? There's a handful of ways, but let's stick with uh, one of my favorites, which is what I call the seven sharp nine sharp five. So if we're sticking with E, E seven sharp nine sharp five, that melodic triad, right? We were using G sharp minor to create E major seven. For E seven sharp nine sharp five, I'm gonna use a C major triad. It's that simple. I'm gonna put a C major triad over E, but it's not just E, it's actually E seven. chord, right, E, D, G sharp, root, flat, seven, third, and then a C major triad on top. So my C major triad notes are actually the most stable notes that I have available to me. Sounds weird, but check this out. You hear that note that wants to move? Tension to resolution. That tension note is G sharp. And it wants to resolve down to G. G sharp, if you know your theory, Daniel, uh, or anybody watching, G sharp is our major third of E7. So if you're running one, three, five, seven chord tones, you're not going to be able to find this sound. It's going to be just out of reach because the major third of our dominant chord here is actually tension and wants to resolve down to sharp nine. We can do the same thing with adding the D note. The D note for E7 is the flat seven, but it wants to pull down to the C note or up to the E note because those are the notes from the C major triad. So I've just made a, a pentatonic scale, a five note scale, by using the C major triad, which gives us the sharp nine, the sharp five, and the root of E7, um, and adding the third and the seventh of that E7 chord. So it's not full-blown altered. It's missing two notes from the melodic minor, the seventh mode of melodic minor, but it's a very powerful way to imply it using triads. So I'll just use this example when you ask how to play out with triads. That was your third question. There's all kinds of ways to do it. I mean, you could just play literally random nonsense based on triads and it will sound structured because of the triad, but it will also sound out. But here's a really simple way is if you know this E7 sharp nine sharp five, the sound of it, if you can hear it in your ear, you can just superimpose this over where it's supposed to resolve. So if we're vamping on like an A minor, triads to play out. I'm just, I'm using the C major triad to play over 
E7, that's our melodic triad, and then I'm superimposing that whole thing over an A minor chord. So if we're vamping an A minor, I could do that. If we're playing some kind of modal tune that goes between you know, D minor and E flat minor, and you want to get out, just use your A7 sharp 9 sharp 5 tonality. Okay? I hope that was helpful. If you have more questions, come and hang in our study group. I'll add the link in the description for this video, and uh, you can come and hang and, and ask questions at the open office hours where I can actually play in real time. Good questions. Thank you, Daniel. Happy practicing, everybody. Thank you.